my friend, this is Magic Brad with The Magic Brad Show, and it's Monday, and it's a Magic Monday. That's right. What does that mean, it's a Magic Monday? Well, to me, magic is all about perception, and so is marketing. And that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today, and how different people do different things. And I've got a fellow magician on, and he uses magic as a metaphor to listen to all these M's, Minnesota, Minneapolis, Minnesota, um, marketing, magic, Magic Brad metaphors as a message and his name is brian richards let's bring him on ladies and gentlemen boys and berries nice round of applause for brian richards da, 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 da. <laughs> i did the switch rule on you <laughs> you got bricks so you got a fireplace there uh, no just just a background something better than green so that's an interesting thing right there um did you get that did you buy that online no, uh, I, I simply had uh, a picture of a red brick background, and then I just used that and oh, mixed it in. You did it yourself. There was a, a fellow friend of ours, a fellow magician friend of ours that uh, was selling those. He called them brick wall. Oh, yeah. I remember seeing those. <laughs> he had a bunch of different backgrounds. He did, but the main thing was the brick wall in a bag kind of going after the comedy club. That's right. the, the vibe. Sure. So that kind of gives the illusion that you are uh, exactly. at a comedy club. That's right. You're at the comedy store in LA. I'm yeah. in the Magic Lounge. I, and I took a minute. I took a minute off my busy schedule to talk to you from my comedy. <laughs> there we go. We all know that you're imprisoned in your home because of COVID. Right. We all are, like most people in this uh, world. So for those that don't know, our friend Brian Richards is a professional magician and entertainer, and he does a lot of work with uh, with uh, the the academia um, teaching because because you know teachers have a hard time keeping those kids in line, right? Because <laughs> I'm also a substitute. I know it well. <laughs> Well, I remember substitutes when I was a kid. They didn't get much respect from the students, did they? Yeah, we had to watch right. people like you, Brad. <laughs> well, it wasn't just me. It was our whole class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have that certain substitute teacher. I bet they, they like you, though, because you do the magic thing and you're not a stick in the mud kind of. It's, it's a way to keep their attention. And I, I think we even mentioned the last time it's, it's something that you can use as a reward for the kids. So it's kind of fun. A, a little incentive. You know, if you be a good kid and do all your homework, uh, we'll do a little little magic thing. Or coming your way if you do what you're supposed to. <laughs> Very cool. So I had sent you over a bunch of different topics that uh, mm -hmm. I would like to talk about. And the reason I picked these because it was my marketing mind and we're talking about finding the right people that could use this kind of, of service that you offer. So I sent you a whole bunch of keywords. <laughs> And I don't know why they call them keywords because they're actually key phrases. They're more than one word. Right. For some reason, the SEO search engine optimization world decide to call it keywords, but it's key phrases. Do you and have that? You had a keyword in your keyword phrases, which was lesson plans that that came over and over again. And that is a big part of what I talk about with teachers is how to use magic in your lesson plan, how to organize a lesson plan. And what well, I talk about some basic things first, breaking down the lesson to its essence, whatever their S the essence of their, there's usually one overall subject. And then you come up with three subtopics mm -hmm. in your lesson plan. And then what I do is I ask teachers to do sort of, um, a self-evaluation and determine three gifts that they have uh, that maybe they haven't shared with their kids in the classroom. For example, maybe a, a person's good at art or they're good at playing a guitar or piano or something. I ask them to put those gifts in a chart too, along with their objectives. And you're then saying, I, you say, are you saying gifts, GIF? Like, right, no gifts, their gifts, their personal gifts that they have. Oh, as teachers. That maybe the maybe the kids have never seen before or experienced. They maybe they didn't share it. It could be a hobby. Like for example, the magic. When I come in as a sub, they don't know I do that until I share it with them. Okay, so to talents and right, talents, yeah. gifts. Yeah. Okay. And so those three go up at the top of your chart. Let's say you have three gifts, and then you have three objectives. And then you just sort of cross them. You you take the gift and the first objective, and how can you tie those two together? Now, for me, the easiest to explain it with would be magic. 
for me, I take each of the objects and I figure what kind of magic trick could I do that would fit to that objective in the lesson plan. Now, obviously, if you're uh, talented at, say, like I said, piano or something, you'd have to figure out how that is connected. So by the end, if you have enough talents or gifts, let's say you come up with four different things you could do in the classroom that the kids would like to learn about or would enjoy. Maybe that's a better way to put it. Well, then you have four or five, let's say five across the top, and then you have three objectives. Well, three times five, you're going to have 15 different things you can do with that lesson plan to engage the kids. And most teachers know that if you have that many possibilities, you're going to have it covered. If you have more than three or four, you know that's easily an hour that you could probably do, and depending on how elaborate those things are. So it's kind of a fun way to stir on your creativity too go over go over that again how that multiplies like that it's kind of interesting that uh that you can all of a sudden have that many things just by having just this with the multiplication right. the basics so you have your three objectives and then like i said let's suppose you have five skills or talents you can use so then what you're going to do is with each talent you're going to come up with a connection to the talent and the first objective and then each talent, all five of them, you're going to come up with something for each of those objectives. Okay. So you know, each objective. So you get three times five, 15. You get 15. That's items. a cool little formula or template where it's uh, it's not that difficult because it's, 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 sometimes it's hard to figure things out. What am I going to talk about? Right. And just create this little grid. And you've got. It forces your, uh, a teacher to think in a different direction, too, when they have to think about their skills and gifts that they have that they haven't used in the classroom before and it may uncover something that they, they never thought of before i never thought about sharing that you know which can really make a huge difference plus the kids get to know you better so your relationship gets stronger too that that's a, a super good point you know you find somebody that's got some kind of cool hobby or whatever that hey that teacher's cool because they they're a bmx biker or something oh yeah well think about you and i whenever we reveal to someone that we do magic you're sure. you're just barraged with questions and do something and you know all that stuff. People are immediately intrigued by that, and that's true with most skills. I, people are. I, I'm. And they say, so what do you do for a real job? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do for a living? A lot of people don't realize that you actually, if you got a little bit of a business mindset, you can make a living doing. Magical entertainment. Or, and that's the key, Brad. You hit it. Yeah. You got to have the business mind first. That's yeah, a little why bit. We call it show business. It really is. Without the business, you're only going to do it as a hobby then. Yeah. Well, that's cool that you've used that, uh, th that business mind to create that little grid like that. I think that's a very useful thing for a teacher. I mean, it, it's almost like, what do they call it? They call it a curriculum, right? Yes. Yeah. And actually, I got the idea of that chart for curriculum and lesson planning because of something called a creativity matrix. And I forget where I read that, but they had the idea of that's how you can stimulate your own creativity is to have all those different boxes and fill them in. Yeah. Because it forces you to take two different things and link them together. And whenever you do that, it forces you to create. Um, so it's kind of fun. In, in fact, one of the books that I first used that in was a book that I sent to Richard Kaufman, who Brad will know. He's a magic, magical writer, and he publishes books. And I sent it to him, and he dismissed it immediately because he said the press of or the the precept was wrong. He didn't believe you could teach creativity, and I strongly disagree with that because I think people have different definitions of what creativity is. And it depends on what parameters you put on it of whether or not you're creative or not. Well, you know, it's, uh, it's interesting that his creative mind could not see beyond the box. <laughs> exactly. It's <laughs> <so> ironic, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> but, I, think, I think that's important that you can't take two, little, two different topics and skills or whatever, and it's going to come up with a third entity. That is creativity. Right. Yep. The process creates something. So yeah. Did you learn this in uh, in um, in an academic book, or is it some other no, book? Honestly, like I was telling you, Brett, I was trying to remember where I read that. I, I was when I was much younger, I went on this creativity kick, and I was looking for all these ways to stimulate creativity. And it was one of those. It may have been the book uh, "Whack on the Side of the Head." 
<laughs> never heard of it, but I wouldn't it's, want it's that. It's all about creativity. It's it's fun ideas of how to be more creative. And uh, like one thing he explained as an example was to take an old deck of cards and put subjects on the cards in big black marker mm -hmm. and mix them up and then pick two cards out and try to link them together and come up with ideas about it. He, that he had just lots of simple exercises like that. And it may have been from that book that he talked about a creativity matrix that I got the idea. Let me um, grab something. Sure. Got it right behind me here. Good, because then I would have had to entertain everybody by myself. Your bud back in. This is um, creative okay. question cards. A friend of mine came up with this deck. And it's got a little uh, little book that interprets what all the cards do. Okay. And cards, you know how affirmations, you know, mm -hmm. I am positive, I am confident. Right. This asks questions like, okay, oh, I deserve what I want. Or something like, why am I supported? Got it. And then, how do I feel when I'm supported? Sure. So it, what it does, the question makes your mind think because it's a, in the form of a question rather than a statement. So that's kind of what you're talking about here is you got these things that, that trigger your brain to get creative. And this is kind of fascinating. I didn't know that you had something like this in place, but it's intriguing to me because it's almost like you got a little grid on a piece of paper. You fill these little things out and boom, now you got your curriculum. Right. And it, it does. It saves time. Um, and, and another thing I should stress you don't have to fill every square out, you know. The optimum is that, that first example I gave was 15 ideas. Well, if you come up with eight ideas, it's totally. more than you had before you started. So now you would also be able to say if a teacher didn't do magic, but mm -hmm. they obviously can. Oh, sure. Be able to uh, just say, okay, we're going to do the magic of learning. They put the little things in and the words in that we're going to use magic. Then they right. could consult with someone like you and they could say, here's three or five things you could do that are easy to do magic tricks. You don't have to exactly. be skilled or talented. You can kind of just wave the wand and it happens. Right. Yeah. In fact, I was playing around with this before we talked and I was I played around with the uh, subject of the Roaring Twenties. So I came up with three objectives, uh, historical figures, prohibition, and the new woman, because they got to vote during that time. Mm -hmm. And for the magic section, I put produce a copy of The Great Gatsby, the book, because that was written during that time. You could talk about F. Scott Fitzgerald. Vanish a glass of liquid to signify prohibition. Um, and then a torn and restored voting ballot for the women's right to vote. You know, cool. three simple little things that can just add a little something to the lesson plan and keep their attention to. So. And there's some effects like, like, you know, the good old fashioned coloring book that a lot of people have. Oh, sure. You'd be able to utilize that for the, uh, one of those elements or even something simple like a, a change bag or a temple screen. We're using technical terms here, but I, there are things. They're magic, that tricks. Can, huh? they're magic tricks that anyone can pretty much do. Yeah. They're fairly easy right. to go with and uh, and you can help people help them through that if they are struggling with well how do you fold that thing again exactly yeah <laughs> so hey you're gonna have to ask your friend if he's heard of the book a whack on the side of the head because I wonder if he was inspired by that too <laughs> the one who produced your cards that's a, that's an interesting book title yes you know? so what's what is this for <laughs> <laughs> exactly. oh, stop it knock the creativity out <laughs> cool. sometimes we need that I so we've gone here for like almost 15 minutes and like you've like i've said before time is a commodity i kind of keep them kind yep. of tight. so i was giving us a little time frame i wanted to i almost forgot i wanted to put some of this stuff up here so people know how to get a hold of you i wish i would have done this earlier why didn't you remind me i forgot i was too busy talking there you go I'm busy oh. being creative there it is Four Ace Magical Connections. So Four Ace Magical Connections. And where what does this go to? Uh, it goes to my website for teachers, basically. So there's a lot of free stuff on there. Um, humor in the classroom, uh, stretching your lesson out, lesson extenders, um, games that you can play in the classroom to review things from a lesson. 
uh, just lots of fun things. It's all free. I do have my book on there that that is bought, but the rest of it's all free. So check it out. A lot of great ideas. And then this is just your main website for a when I was doing school assemblies, which we will be doing soon, I hope. Yeah, I think so. Some people don't think so, but. I think so. I think, uh, I don't, this has only been going on for what? Six months? Yeah. It's only it been six like months. eternity, but. <laughs> it has, it's, it seemed to, it's really weird. I mean, I get to a point where, you know what? I just got to get out of the house. So I just get in the car and go drive around and go do something. And that's what you got to do, but. I think it'll be all better someday. It's not going to be this horrible thing forever, ever. I agree. Well, here we are. Dun, dun, dun. It's Magic Monday. Brian and Brad here. I'm going to sign this off. Brian, I'll pop you in the green room so we can have a little conversation. And then I'm going to great. beam it up to the universe and let those lesson plans be found by those uh, anxious teachers that are just ready to teach their students with magic. It's always fun sharing with you. Okay. Peace. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Brian Richards with 4Ace Productions. Let me put that up there again so you can see what's going down. This is a connection to some of his lessons that he offers, and this is the website for when you want to hire him. And um, he's actually from originally, well, he, he was from Chicago, <laughs> and now he's here in Minneapolis, and a good addition to the Twin Cities. So, peace, love, and happiness. That's all I've got for now. Enjoy the rest of your day. Be well, be good, be safe, be smart, and be kind. Peace.